Okay, so I'm gonna do a quick promo on the bike and what makes it so great. It's got the motor and a battery. That's what we specialize in. Of course, those are gonna be good. We tuned it. Uh, I, I got the firmware all down. So the torque sensor, it's got a torque sensor. A lot of pedal assist guys say, but what about the torque sensor? This gear motor actually has a 30 to one gear ratio. Um, I, one thing I wanna address is people says, why does Luna Cycle only use Bafang motors? Or you know, why don't they use like Bosch like everybody else? Or you know, the, where are the other drives like the the uh, uh, bros drive or whatever. And the, and the reason is those are not high power drives, guys. And they were drives designed for the Europe market, which is a 300 watt limit. You know, and you know, this is a 20, 2000 watt drive and it, you can feel a big difference between a two horsepower and no horsepower. So uh, 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 that's why we chose this motor. It wasn't we chose the motor, we went and demanded like a motor be built that was that could do this and you know like and it didn't exist like and that's why I'd love if it had our own motor system but we're not that you know we focused on the battery we can't do a motor and a bit but we, at one point we're trying to build our own motor system that was ridiculous but anyways uh, the bike has quality components has eagle components in the back the wheels and tires cost me 300 bucks like, can you imagine the wheels and tires cost me 300 bucks they cost me more than a Saunders cost Saunders you know what I mean? Just for the wheels and tires, but that's what quality wheels and tires cost. And not only that, we got to go through the labor of building the wheels and tires here. So the spokes I heard are like a dollar each because it has good spokes. And you know, on a high power bike, you need, you want that stuff to be quality. That's what makes it safe. Good brakes, you know, hydraulic brakes, all top name stuff. Uh, and the wheels, most importantly, are built by somebody who knows what they're doing. It's hard to get a decently built, built wheel these days at any price. Like, you know, there's so few. Uh, bikes built with artistic detail and to every part and the wheel build's really important but guess what like good wheel builders aren't a machine and they cost a lot of money and uh, these are these by these wheels are built really well I guarantee it and um, uh, you can see the rim suspension fork and quality rock shocks in the back you can geek out on this bike and price out every part and know that you're getting expensive stuff and just add it all together and figure what it costs now that's much different when I look at electric bikes generally for sale. I was looking at the competition just be, when we're trying to decide on a price on this thing. And it's really silly. Like they don't tell you what you're getting. They'll put like an expensive suspension fork on it. And then like, don't ask what brakes they're using or they use Tectro brakes and Tectro brakes are somehow great. I don't know how that happened. But you know, like, but I think that if we're gonna break through to bike guys, we need to sell good bikes to start with. You know, that it's, it's a given that if you're gonna charge big money for a bike, that every part on that bike needs to be beautiful and great. After we started selling bikes, we realized the difficulties. Is that there was no cheap way to just buy a bike. Uh, we bought the Gravity Direct thing, we're snapping parts. And then to build a bike from the ground up with the parts that we needed, there was, you know, parts were super expensive. And I realized it's gonna take really a big company effort to uh, get the pricing that we needed on all the parts and uh, get the motor system that we wanted as well. Um, I didn't want to base a, motor, a bike on the BBS HD, even though I, you know, we, we really figured that drive out. Um, I wanted to drive, I, I, I wanted a special drive made for us that was made for this bike. And I actually went to Bafang and met with the big boss in China and talked to him about a special motor for a special bike I wanted to build. It was about two years ago I met with the big boss and we ended up having drinks, going out to dinner, really hitting it off, spending hours together. We had a really nice dinner. And at the end of the dinner, he said, I'm gonna build you that special motor. It's just for you. And this is what they came up with. It's a, I, I think they were gonna build the motor anyway, but uh, they made it for us in magnesium, higher power, all the stuff that we wanted. Uh, so it's lighter and it's higher power. And we worked with them to get all the kinks worked out, which we had a lot of, you know, um, uh, uh, early growing pains that we worked through and using our machine shop we would uh, make a sprocket for it you know like if there was an internal weak gear and we went through a lot of motors figuring out figuring out this bike and it's part of the reason why this bike took so long is that we had to build the most advanced battery ever the uh, put on like the highest power motor that ever anyone's ever put on a production e-bike and then um, you know uh, then you, you get sourcing all the parts and this is really, really tough. And um, the whole time you're like tempted to just go to China, go to China uh, and buy a container of bikes. Uh, I'll show you the best option we had for that is right here. Uh, this is a bike I brought back from Interbike 
And I looked at this company, they're the same ones who build a couple of the huge brands, I don't want to mention any names, but guys who sell their bikes for five or six thousand dollars. And you know, there's nothing awe-inspiring about this bike. You know, and it has the ultra motor, but you know, it's, it's missing a lot. And even if we put our touches on it, you might as well, you want to start again. The other thing, when you talk about it takes a company effort, it's expensive to bring in a container of bikes and it's risky and expensive and the bikes not, may not sell. And I feel sorry for all the companies that do that. And every year at Interbike, you have some new company who puts their brand on a non-inspiring bike and then they have to try to sell a bunch of them and it's it's not as easy. Um, the joke that I've always had, I've been going to Interbike for years, is that there's more people trying to buy bikes, sell bikes, than there are people trying to buy bikes. So uh, uh, there's a lot of different people who have the idea to start an e-bike company and I, I, uh, and we wanted our bike to be special, to stand out on its own. And it, it's not easy, but I, I, to build something really special and that's what we did. Uh, we designed the bike in SolidWorks. Um, uh, the Apollo, we actually did two frames. We did the Apex and the Apollo. Uh, the Apex is just as special, but this is a more traditional suspension design, so we know it works. It's a proven design where the Apex was more of a risk. Uh, this is a known thing. We had a lot of problems with the Apex initially. We had to change the entire swing arm after getting like 50 of them made. And uh, you know, it's a, a big deal to do a carbon fiber bike. And uh, uh, you know, and I think it's doing it right because of the shapes that we were able to do. And then we uh, uh, learned how to build our own batteries, building the Apex and Apollo battery, which used our advanced BMS for the first time. Uses Rosenberg connectors. I'll show you that in a second. But but really, like it was a really challenging battery to kick off our battery factory. But you know, we needed it so bad because we announced the Apex, and it, we thought we'd have it done in like two months. And, it ends up taking us like six months just to finish the battery. We went through three different designs. This shape was really tough, but we wanted to do something tough, but I wish we would have waited later in the game before doing such a complicated battery. We tried using 2100 700 cells at first because everybody said they were awesome. And when we started testing the 21700 cells, they were expensive and they had their problems. And we I, I wanted to go back to what we knew, which is 18650s, GAs, and 30Qs. We sold thousands of them and we know it. And, um, you know, but it's really like, uh, the big point is to make the best e-bike ever wasn't easy. It took all our whole company's energy for three or three or four years now to, to get to this level. And I'm gonna say it was probably easier and more profitable just selling parts that was easy and fun. We didn't need these big buildings that we have now. Uh, you can see a Court Rye video where we're doing a walkthrough and that was before, that was right as we started selling bikes, maybe a month before. And now if you can look around here what we have, Selling bikes takes this whole of an infrastructure. I mean, that's the machine that we use to just wrap the bikes. Like shipping bikes is its own thing. I mean, I remember when we started the company, just shipping a frame would cost me like 400 bucks. So, I mean, just everything was so difficult. And I realized that we're using 80% of our energy just to sell bikes. And the reason why we kept doing it was it, I want to be a bike brand. And I decided on building the best bike ever. And I don't think that was, necessarily a very good idea you know like but here it is we did it you know like it, it, you know we put a lot of energy into this we could have put all the ener energy into just building batteries and we probably would have made more money but uh, this was I think the right thing to do and we realized that selling bikes takes a lot of effort it takes a lot of space and uh, I, we realized that we're putting more and more of our energy into bikes and at one point we thought about stopping but we were learning so much about the kits we were selling and you know by just having bikes around us all the time and building bikes ourselves and having a great bike mechanic at our at our side all the time you know it, i think it ended up uh, uh being a really good thing because i consider ourselves a bike brand now a new bike brand which is really rare um i think that uh uh, uh if we were just selling batteries and kits you would think of buffet drives or you know I, 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 or um, a Cyclone or whatever and not think about us. And um, the other big thing is the parts weren't there yet for a fast bike when we started this company. And I don't think without us there would have been a push for the kind of parts that we wanted. Um, I did go to China, the, not the trip going to ask for this tribe, the trip before I went to China asking for them to make the BBSHD. We bought a container of them while everybody else was buying samples, which got the BBSHD kicked off, and we basically became the biggest 
dealer of this high power system and we had to make our own battery because nothing else on the market would power it because we wanted to run ours at 2500 watts. And when you look at bikes and you look at the business model, it's way easier to do a low powered bike and say it's fast than do a high powered bike. And we don't even put real numbers of what our bikes are do, but this is a 2500 watt bike or 2000 watt bike and you can figure out that it's a lot faster than a 400 watt bike. And um, you know, I, four years ago, we didn't have the parts. A lot of these parts we had to make uh, or, you know, were made for us. Uh, you know, like Bafang thought we were crazy for ever wanting anything over a thousand watts was just crazy. Why would anybody ever want that? And, you know, my passion's fast e-bikes and I'm a pretty strong arguer for fast stuff. When, and I can say that, you know, if, if this bike was 400 watts, if we dialed it down and used a cheaper battery and all this, it would be so easy, you know, like, but I really couldn't argue that you should buy it because I think it's a lot of hassle to get just a little bit of power. I think you should just pedal at that point. The bikes are great for old people if, if all you're going to get is 400 watts worth of assist. But if you're going to get, you know, if you want to sell to young people, which I want to sell to, I want to sell something that you can just go race on or you know, do some really exciting extreme stuff. And this, 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 is, this is what, what we shot for. Now let me show you some of the parts to um, see what I mean when I'm talking about building the best parts. Uh, you got to, basically to build the best bike ever is a, 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 a conglomerate of parts. And what was hard about that is a lot of these parts we had to assemble, you know, we built our own batteries. So I want to show you the battery pack. And we got wicked good at building batteries. And we had to because we wanted something that was going to stand out in a bike. So, you know, we learned the potting materials more. We used like 3M micro balloons to make it a lot lighter this time. And uh, we got Rosenberg to make us 50 amp Rosenberg connectors. Now, these connectors aren't even on the market, and if you can find them, they're like $80 each. Now, the Rosenberg connector I, I always heard of only was good for charging for 10 amps, and that's this one right here. And then what we did, so it's a magnetic connector. It's got kind of a swivel mount, and uh, it's really awesome. You know, you plug it, it's like a magnet, so it's kind of like Apple charger times 10. And then, but look at this. So this is us 3D printing parts and we had to do a lot of iterations and designs. Then we had to um, change our frame. Uh, this is a 50 amp Rosenberg right here. Uh, Rosenberg capable of putting out 50 amps and see how it swivels. That's so that when you put the battery on and you see this little knob, this holds the battery pack in, bam. And like that, we're able to fit a 21 amp power and it slides in and then we screw it in right here. But it's a, a really neat, finish that, that came all together and it took a lot of design changes and everything to get to that point to where you know suddenly we like really can do this like we can do magnetic mounts or we can do you know uh, 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 batteries that are any shape or size and we can fit 21 amp, 21 amp hours which is a thousand watt hours in this bike which is what you need to go fast like if you want a high power bike the sad part is you need a big battery there's no way around it you need a massive battery so using high quality cells, you know, really good BMS, our own BMS, our own pack. We we're able to construct a pack exactly what we wanted, which is a pack for a high powered bike that looks sexy. And, um, and that's what I mean by bringing all the parts together. Ren, I got to know the owner of the company. He gave us a deal because he wants his fork on this great bike. Uh, uh, he did the handlebars, the carbon handlebars, um, the heads, uh, head tube right here, the, um, what do you call that, Kyle? The stem and uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, it's a thousand dollar fork, and then we have a quality rock shocks on the back. And you know, like to get these deals with these companies, you can't just be anybody. Here's our shop, and as you can see, this is where the Apollos are being built. We learned a hard lesson with the Apex, and that we sold them too fast. A lot of times, uh, this no marketing strategy of mine, we a lot of times just sell bikes faster than we can sell them. So we have a new style now where we pre-build the bikes so that people don't end up like uh, our first Apex customers and waiting six months. So uh, this time it's not that hard because we pre-built the batteries and we got the battery figure out. But here it is, you can see all the batteries being built, uh, um, uh, bikes being built, uh, getting ready. Uh, this is an Apex that's going out to a lucky customer. And um, uh, the bikes are built here in the USA. As you can see, we don't you know, just say USA built, we are. You know, it was really great for us as a company to learn about e-bikes so that like 
you know, like, you know, like for example, when the Sauron had the headset problems, he knew exactly what the issue was and how to fix it. And I mean, Sauron learns from us or, you know, and it, when, we, when you sell an entire bike like this, you learn fast, but he's our resident bike expert. And, um, you know, it, it's, it's been a pain, huh? Like getting all the parts, even for us, uh, you know, sometimes there's just one perfect part you're missing to make the complete bike. And I, 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 the trick to mid-drives is having all good parts to make it reliable. Otherwise, you're just going to snap stuff. The other thing I want to say is that we really did give a lot of Americans jobs. And, you know, like nobody talks about that anymore. I believe that made in America is real. But I, I, you can see that when you're obsessed, like I really want to know what happened to building bikes. I think it's really cool. When I was growing up, I used to go to bike shops where the guy would build his own frame and assemble the own bikes. And you see we got here, we're, pinstri we're adding pinstripes as the latest feature we're doing. You can see we're adding orange to this bike here. With, um, and you never see this kind of stuff anymore, which is you know, just pure artist, artisism. Uh, we got our uh, vinyl pr printers going too, so we do a lot of cutouts, a lot of printing, a lot of you know, stainless steel we cut in, laser engraving. Um, we, I think we've treated every little thing like an art, and now we're getting back to basics and doing hand brushing on the bikes, which uh, I, goes with my motto of being artists. Like, don't you want to be an artist? You know? No, yeah, that's pretty sweet. Would you rather be a little weenie or would you rather be a hot dog? Huh? You want to be a little weenie or a hot dog? Uh, Bratwurst. You want to sell 500 watt bikes or you want to sell 2,000 watt bikes? Nah, man, the high powered shit. The high powered shit. It's like, you know, it's hard to do this stuff. And, you know, like sometimes I think, oh my God, I could get those bikes for like 400 bucks from China and bring them in and we won't have to build them. Me and Kyle could just drink beers all day. Yeah. And by the way, when we go to Interbike, you see me and Kyle drinking beers, walking around, looking at all the little weenie bikes. And we call them little weenie bikes because of their battery packs look like penis size, right? Wiener. Yeah, yeah they're, they're. <laughs> and then they'll just say, yeah, it's got a 40 mile range, goes 30 miles an hour, you know, and uh, it costs like $7,000 and, you know, and I, you know, the bikes, even if it says made in Germany, it's probably not. And you know, there's just nothing that was that inspiring. So I shouldn't be talking about bikes, uh, other bikes in my best bike ever announcement. But if we're going to say best bike ever, then I want to compare our bike to you know, something really good. And this bike was my favorite bike in our bike last year by far. And it's the Spitzing and it's got a 900 watt uh, uh, battery and you can see it has a Rosenberg connector and it's a, a carbon frame, but it's beautiful and it inspires me, but it's missing one big thing, it's missing a throttle. And dude, I, whenever I, I, I think we, we only sell three bikes in our bike with the throttle. You know, half the show was electric bikes and only three of them had throttles. And it's super easy to build an electric bike without a throttle because you don't have to worry about somebody torquing it, being in the wrong gear and blowing out stuff. You know, like a uh, bike has to be solid to be sold with the throttle. So uh, my bike, I don't think any of our customers would ever accept a pedal assist only bike. The throttle's a nice thing to have. You know, sometimes you don't feel like pedaling. Um, this bike misses another key part. You know, we talk about the parts making everything great. Look, it has a lot of cheap parts that you can see around, like the pedals. Uh, you know, uh, some of the, some of the uh, 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 brake parts aren't what we would put on our bikes because, you know, we know stopping's as important as going fast on a fast bike. But look, this one really misses. It's a Chinese display, like really bad, like King Meter, that looks like 10 years old and, you know, has missed the whole point lately of like, you know, nice, nice monitors and nice display interface, like, you know, what's done on the specialized bikes or whatever. And it's a $14,000 bike, by the way. And at $14,000, you got to hit every part. And, you know, um, uh, Kyle was saying, I messed up on headsets. I, that's right. I was mad about the headset on our bike. Uh, it's kind of a cheap headset. And it kind of wrecks it for me when I see that cheap name on our bike. So we want to change it. Well, this one, you know, like the, 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 if you miss a throttle and you're missing a good display, you, you know, it's like the whole usability of the bike. And, it, you know, it's like even though they got a great battery and it's a decent motor, they missed out. I'm really proud of the, uh, 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 the quality of the carbon fiber on this bike. And it's really hard to do carbon fiber where you see it. That's why not a lot of companies do it. But you can see how good the carbon is, you know, that it's, it's, it's the real deal. And we actually put a carbon seat on this, which isn't very comfortable. But, dude, when you're riding around in this thing, it's like if you're riding in a Lamborghini, you shouldn't be too concerned with how comfortable your seat is. So we kind of give it like a, our like um, 
buy into the industry that you have to ride with an uncomfortable seat and just get used to it. I know Kyle, I just look at him and know that he rides with an uncomfortable seat, right? So you're not allowed to put big balloon seats on this bike. You're not allowed to put goofy stuff on your handlebars. You're not allowed to put rear racks on it. And I want to somehow get some legal document that makes sure that nobody mucks up our bike, that these bikes are sold to the bike guys who we're going to try to make bikes cool again. Right? And I don't want to messing up our stuff by putting all this goofy stuff on it. Don't you agree, Kyle? Yeah, like stem risers. And Dude, whenever anybody bike. buys like an Apex and they put a big balloon bike, balloon seat on it, I feel like that dude in that, uh, in that cooking movie where like somebody orders pasta and potatoes and he freaks out. You can't do that, dude. You can't order that bike and put like a big old balloon comfy seat on it. Right, you know, go, you know, uh, but we do offer it with a Brooks saddle, I think. Well, we still do that, you know, um, and uh, Brooks saddle looks cool, and I'll put up with that. But never, never, we're gonna put some big goofy air cushion seat on this sexy looking bike, you know. And I don't think anybody who buys it should do it. And I hope we can get contracts from everybody that they won't put crappy parts on our on our perfect bike. Guys, go best bike ever, and I'm open to challenges. If anybody wants to do a pound per pound comparison or a price per price comparison, um, and it wasn't easy and it wasn't that fun like I thought it would be. Like it took way longer than I thought. I'm still mad about how long this took, and you know I knew it was going to be hard. But I didn't think it would be that hard. And what it did take was us to become a great company to offer this bike, to be able to ship it, to be able to build it, to be able to, you know, build a battery ourselves, to be able to, um, you know, uh, uh, assemble something like this and uh, uh, be able to machine things when we need them. You know, being able to like cut holes in places that we normally wouldn't be able to cut holes. And, you know, like, and having sources for all these parts that want to take care of us because they know we're Lunacycle and we're a known brand in the e-bike industry or in the bike industry even. You know, we don't need a booth for people to know who we are. What we got instead of a booth, guys, is we got, what do you call it, Kyle? What? The best bike ever? <laughs> huh? Yeah, it's a, you know, this and the Apex are the best bikes ever. I stand behind that. Like, uh, and when I heard that we could get that and it would only cost this much money, I go, we got to get that. And that's way better than giving money to Facebook advertising or money on fancy videos. Or, you know, I, I think we made a mistake on the Apex by doing a fancy stancy video. And we did it ourselves and we did it in one night where I, historically all we've done to market our products, Kyle knows, is just talk about them. And you know, I think that you're gonna find this video and you're gonna watch the whole thing and you'll appreciate what I'm saying is that how do you make it in an industry that's full of a lot of BS and a lot of marketing and not, you know, like, like how do you come in and sell something that really does 30 or 40 miles an hour, but people are so used to hearing it, they go, oh yeah, right. You know, but the first time that somebody rides one of these bikes, they're gonna feel the power, they're gonna feel it, they can pop a willy and it's, it's, it's exhilarating and different. And I want, that feeling out of people, that smile, that you know, they're not disappointed the first time they ride our bikes. And everybody knows that everything we sell is, is pretty fast. You know, I don't think we have a single non-fast e-bike, do we? We could have put a lot of money into marketing and focus on just you know, this bike in the beginning. And you know, we wouldn't have all the other things we have right now, which is you know, sarons and batteries and kits and you know, tool kits for customers. And, Everything was super expensive. Like when you buy this bike, you get a tool kit. You get a, you get a custom made bike cover that says Luna on it and the cover's you know, made out of a space blanket. Like what was that movie with the space blanket? You know, your bike comes with a space blanket. I forgot to put it in the ad, right? But you know, we had to get those made like 3,000 at a time to get just the fabric we wanted. You know, it's better than any bike cover I've ever seen on the market. You know, for, you know, and we got them for cheap because we bought thousands of them. We just give them to every customer we get them and their size for the bike. And when you leave your bike in the sun, if you have a black bike, it's going to deteriorate your battery. And we know stuff like that now that, you know, it, you know, that it's a good thing that we ship a bike cover that reflects the sun and, you know, bounces off the heat because you don't want your, your electric bike heating up in the sun. And we know that makes a difference because we build batteries. All right, so when you snap the bike on, you get a Luna display. Um, these are the ways that we like improve the industry. Like we really wanted a good display and we worked with the company that makes these displays with a lot of alliterations to uh, help them with the design and what a display should do. And uh, you know, a, a couple of years ago, all the displays were just pure junk. And 
that's another example of how, you know, you know, you have to have somebody saying, hey, we want some good throttles, you know, like these thumb throttles kind of suck here still, you know, and there's a lot of room for improvement still in the electric bike business. It's kind of new, but it really takes people wanting to do stuff like build the best e-bike ever that the parts are going to get better because we demand, hey, we want a better throttle, you know, we want, you know, a, a, a thumb throttle that doesn't stick or we want a twist throttle that doesn't suck, you know, and, you know, I, 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 it's an example of, of improving the technology and making it so it's not ugly, not big, and sexy. And I, I, I eventually we're gonna have bikes that'll, electric bikes that'll like drive themselves and that kind of stuff. But right now we're just focused on charging and you know, you know, uh, getting, down, uh, getting good power when you want it, when you need it, and being lightweight and cool.